Welcome Altcoin Buzz Army. I am Zach and today we are going to be looking at Mimble Wimble technology, a new technology proposed for the Bitcoin network. Now it's a pretty simple alteration to the way Bitcoin work is done and it involves a little bit of maths which is what, or math if you're American, which is what we're going to be doing later on but we're first going to talk in terms of verbally, in terms of words, how it's going to change the way Bitcoin does things and it's only proposed so we don't yet know um, whether it's going to be integrated into the Bitcoin system, whether it's on a side chain or across the whole of the Bitcoin network, but it could be something that's very interesting and very pertinent to the future of Bitcoin. So first of all, in order to understand why Mimblewimble is necessary, we need to look at Bitcoin's issues. So there have been a lot of issues with Bitcoin in terms of a technology. And Satoshi Nakamoto himself or herself, we don't know um, who it was, uh, designed Bitcoin. And in his privacy section of the white paper, the, there was um, sort of a look at the errors or the, the problems that Bitcoin does have. And there are a few problems. So first of all, the scalability. It stores huge amounts of data, the Bitcoin network, because each block um, records both the inputs, outputs, all the transaction data. So when the transaction was sent by who, uh, the inputs and outputs, and all the wallet data. So which wallet to, which wallet from, and how much is in each wallet, uh, so that is quite a issue for scalability because each block is massive. It, it requires, um, it needs to store huge amounts of data and therefore that makes it less scalable, able to do less transactions per second compared to a lot of other coins out there. On top of that, the privacy element, you know, it's only semi-anonymous. So you can see the addresses and the amount in each address and if you are a good hacker or a good um, investigator, you can probably find out which, um, who the addresses belong to if you really want to. And that's an issue going forward in the future, especially for people that have a lot of Bitcoin and a lot of other cryptocurrencies. You know, they could be targeted by armed groups, ransom groups, that sort of thing. So it's, it's only semi-anonymous and that is sort of a problem. And it's, it's like this because it needs to verify um, the transaction. It needs to verify that the transaction is real. So it needs to verify that if I send you five Bitcoins, that five Bitcoins come out on the other side and not six, seven, you know, so you're not printing Bitcoin. And that is why it uses this system. And Mimblewimble will, in fact, um, take away that sort of rote data. It will anonymize it and still be able to verify that the transaction is real so that there aren't people printing money. It's also, um, the reason also for this is to verify the sender um, with a private address and to verify uh, the end receiver with a private address so that they are real and that the person sending them does actually have that amount of Bitcoins in their address. However, Apart from the private address, all this is public information. So this is information that you sent this from your public address to someone else's public address. The amount is, is there and the time that it's sent. So as a privacy, um, as privacy goes, it's not very private. Um, so if we talk about normal Bitcoin transactions and then we can sort of contrast that against Mimblewimble. So a normal transaction contains the amount in and the amount out. And if it's equal, um, they cancel out and therefore you've got a verified transaction. If they're not equal, then it's not verified and that transaction cancels um, or <laughs> highlights that there is a hacker on the network and it's sent from a public address and a signature from the private key signs the transaction on the public address and the person, uh, the receiver knows that signature um, and therefore the transaction can go ahead. So blockchain checks that the signature is from that address. If it is, the transaction is verified. So this satisfies the two requirements for something to be real money. The first is that if I send you, uh, if I give you $20, you receive $20 and I no longer have $20. So there is no sort of printing or excess of money being made. And then on top of that, it needs to verify that 
Um, the money is coming from an address rather than someone else's address taking it from you. So for example, um, I can't go to your bank account and take money out of your bank account. You are the only one who can do it. You can send me the money. Um, and the same is here with Bitcoin. So it checks the signature of the sender to make sure that it's the sender sending the money and not the receiver taking the money. And that's very important because we don't want people on the receiving end to be going around and taking other people's money. So it, it satisfies those two points. However, Mimblewimble just improves on the whole system as a whole. So if we look at Mimblewimble transaction, so instead of the sender having those signatures from the private address, they have a series of numbers that multiply together to make a larger number. And some of these numbers that are, uh, multiply together are hidden and they're called blinding factors. So the sender has these blinding factors and the recipient uh, randomly selects a range of the factors. You know, these multiply to a large number only known by the sender and the recipient. So then these factors are, are proof of ownership, basically. And when we go into the maths, you'll understand this a little bit more. But basically, with the massive, massive numbers that this uses, the factors act as sort of a proof of ownership because uh, both the sender and the receiver will know that final equals big number. And um, if the factors don't go into it, you know that that transaction is not valid. And you could say, oh, maybe they will go into it. But if you're looking at these huge numbers, it's very, very unlikely that coincidence will ever happen. So therefore, you know, the addresses and the amount is concealed, uh, but it's verified if the number of inputs and outputs is the same. However, with Bitcoin, you're looking at five Bitcoin sent is the same as five Bitcoin received. With this, the amount sent is multiplied by these blinding factors. So therefore it becomes a much larger number, a number that is unfathomable to us at the minute. So that basically means that you cannot see the amount um, on the transaction, which gives that privacy. So also Mimblewimble will improve the blocks. So the blocks use CoinJoin, which is a technology that's already out there, so that some of the transactions are joined together and the outputs are therefore different. So you cannot know the individual inputs, outputs and addresses. So therefore that greatly reduces the block size, you know, because wallet IDs and transaction data isn't stored in the blocks. So it gives it privacy and it reduces the block size giving it a much more scalable uh, manner, which is brilliant for Bitcoin currently. And that is a really, really important and um, constructive piece of technology for Bitcoin in general. So this is gonna be very, very simple maths that I hope that you'll be able to understand. And we're gonna be explaining some of that initial transaction, um, transaction words with this maths, and hopefully it does explain it. We're gonna keep it at the most basic level, just like we did with the words, just so that everyone can understand it and hopefully get a little bit of a grasp on what Mimblewimble technology really is. So in maths, you know, if you do this top transaction, uh, top, um, top equation here, 12 times 34 equals, if I gave you pen and paper, you'd be able to do that pretty easily. Um, however, if I did, uh, you know, X times Y equals 4,567, would you be able to work out what those numbers were? And they are, they can be various different numbers. So therefore it's much, much harder. You know, it could be 4,567 times one. And this is sort of the basis of cryptography in general. Uh, but for the sake of, you know, simplicity for this, we're going to be using much smaller numbers than Mimblewimble and Bitcoin uses. Um, but they do use, they use massive numbers, but we're going to explain it with these simple numbers uh, so that we humans can get our heads around it. We don't need to be computers to do so. So in Mimblewimble, you have this large number on the right hand side, if we look at that top bullet point, and then it's so 12 times X times seven times 19 times Y. You would not be able to tell me those numbers. And also they could be different numbers um, as well. So if you look, if, uh, if, 
But if I tell you the numbers, so x is 54 and y equals 6. Uh, so can you tell me those numbers, that x and y? No, not easily at all. It's very hard and it can be multiple ones. So if I tell you them, it's x equals 54 and y equals 6. Um, to verify this, it's so easy. All you do is you divide the, the last number by either one of those and it should go into it. Um, and if it's wrong, you multiply them all together, it won't be the right product. So this is how Mimblewimble hides the data. It hides the data by multiplying by unknowns. And these unknowns are unknown to everyone else, but they're known only to the receiver and the sender. So it's, it acts as a private key by disclosing the factors of the product in the transaction. So in a transaction, it hides the data by multiplying by unknowns. So if you multiply by the unknowns and you get this random number at the end, if you look at the top, bullet point that's very different to just five bitcoin in five bitcoin out it's all the private key comes by disclosing the factors of the product in the transaction so those are disclosed between the sender and the receiver and they act as a proof of having the um, having the bitcoins in the wallet so when you send that five bitcoin to someone else um, the private factors these factors in the um, um, in the product um, of the transaction they act as sort of a proof of ownership for the receiver so that x and y if you look at the top transaction would act as a proof of ownership there so we're going to look at a little bit of factorizing so if you look at the second bullet point this is very simple sort of maths if you have an x plus y times z um, and the x plus y is uh, within brackets, so before the times z, that is the same as x times z plus y times z. So if you look at 2 plus 3 times 4, that equals 20. That's the same as 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 3 times 4, which is 12, which equals 20. And this is a key in this Mimblewimble maths. So you have the amount sent times by n1, which is a big number. Um, just n stands for number, so first number plus the key, the key factor times a big number. Then you plus that by the amount received times the first big number plus key two times the second big number. This is pretty sort of simple. In the normal transaction, however, you don't times by this massive number. That's the big difference here. You don't times by n1 or n2, so you just get five amount sent and amount received, so five minus five. And that makes it so it's wrote and seen by everyone, so it's no longer private. So if you remember the top, now you do this. So it's n1, so the big number, times by the amount sent plus the amount received, added to the second big number for the keys times by key one plus key two. So what you should get, if the amount received equals the amount sent, um, so you, if you look at the second bullet point there, you get N1 five minus five, so it's N1 times zero, which means that it's um, a zero plus the keys times N2. And this verifies that the transaction is valid so that that verifies that the transactions in as a whole valid in mathematically speaking so if the transaction part so the first part the n1 times 5 uh, minus 5 does not equal 0 then the transaction is not valid so say for example it equals 1 or 2 or minus 7 then the transaction isn't valid and uh, that transactions cancelled so then the key parts should then add up to the number the address addresses no so that big number if you go back to you see that 517,000 if you get the key parts uh, times that big number they should add up to that number and they should be factors of that number so once all the factors are added to, uh, times together they should add up to that big number and that shows that the private key is right and it shows as a private key which is perfect and it verifies the private key so it's done the two things it needs to do money first of all it's made sure that the amount received um, and the amount sent are equal and the second thing is it verifies the private keys by making sure the k1 plus the k2 times n2 um, goes to the big number or that the k1 and the k2 are factors of that large number that is only known between the sender and the receiver. 
So this very simple maths is very, very clever. It's all in conjunction with CoinJoin, which joins up the transactions as we spoke about before uh, and just has a list of inputs and a list of outputs. Instead of having for the normal Bitcoin transactions, every single input, every single output, all the transaction data. And what that does is reduce the block size, increasing the scalability of Bitcoin. So that is really it for Mimblewimble. I hope I explained the maths. Um, maths perfectly well for you guys. I hope you understood it. I tried to do it as simple as possible and use um, letters instead of you know uh, numbers just to make it a little bit simpler. And I hope it was all understandable. Um, it's very key to take away that this is very very simple maths. And the big difference is the fact that in these uh, equations. All the numbers are times by these N1s and N2s, the big numbers, in order to create a huge number that is no longer seeable by everyone else. So they don't know what the actual number of Bitcoins was that were sent. And they also don't know the private keys. Uh, but sorry, they don't know the public keys, unlike a normal Bitcoin transaction. It's very key to take that away. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks again, Altcoin Buzz. Out.